this. It's four minutes that she's there. Yay. Good to go? Yay. Cool. I'll have to start yours. It's so and good. I'll, I'll do the... Hey. Yeah, that's I've made videos thing. before. Uh, hi, everyone. Some of you have seen me already talk before. So we're just going to skip through a bunch of this junk. Um, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> that's my cat. I wrote a book. Um, so this talk is going to be a little bit about um, data journalism uh, and fighting for public records and what you can do once you get those public records. Um, these are some of the people who have helped with a little bit of what this talk is, uh, because again, a journalist shows where they got their information from. Um, Lynn Gregory of ProPublica and Mike Riley, who's also an SVJ Google News Lab trainer, as well as like a college-level educator, awesome human beings. And then also NICAR slash IRE, which is the Investigative Reporters and Editors, and NICAR is National Institute for Computer Assisted Reporting. Um, they've helped teach me a lot of this stuff throughout my career. So that's where I've kind of gotten a lot of this from. So you might be asking yourself, what is data journalism? Um, and I have to say that this phrase gets used a lot, and in my brief career, uh, it has come and gone, or it has taken on new terms. Um, it's pretty ambiguous. And if you ask 18 people, you'll get uh, different, uh, 18 different answers. Um, you can think of it as the new possibilities that arise when you combine traditional journalistic skills, so like being curious and skeptical, asking questions, talking to people, finding powerful narratives, telling comparing stories, and the explosion of new digital information and tools. So it's kind of like all this digital stuff's happening, plus we have standard journalism skills. It's brand new. Um, data stories themselves can be about any topic, but often they focus on trends and exceptions. A story about rising income inequality or burn of action bans across America are both data stories. They tell us about trends using stats and data analysis. But a story about the one university that saddles its students with thousands of dollars of debt, or the couple doctors that charge way more for the same procedures than other doctors, uh, they tell us about outliers or exceptions. This was a project that the Tampa Bay Times did that was why Pinellas County is the worst place in Florida to be black and go to public school. So that's an outline. Uh, and it, but it's also kind of a trend of uh, schools being uh, shitty to minorities or uh, a you know, majority minority schools uh, usually getting less funding or being more inferior, inferior uh, because of institutional racism. Uh, here's another example from the Chicago Tribune. Um, again, many red light cameras were put in low crash areas, despite the mayor and all these other people saying, we are building these to stop crashes. It's like, no, you put them in a bunch of areas where a shitload of people drive so you can make a bunch of money. Don't lie. Um, and again, this was done, uh, my good buddy Alex Richards uh, worked on this. And so they did a study that were like, these don't make drive drivers safer. Uh, and they actually may have caused more injury-related crashes. So they did the exact opposite of what they were supposed to do. Uh, so data stories can also take on a multitude of forms. Sometimes the data appears in like a long traditional investigative story which provides context, specific numbers. Other times the data might appear in like a chart or interactive graphic. Sometimes uh, a database that lets users search for their own city or school or hospital and kind of lets you tell your own story in that data. So uh, this is the Chicago homicide map. I built this a long time ago at the Chicago Tribune. Uh, still exists, still runs. Uh, and this is a mixture of street level, boots on the ground reporting, and data and, journal and like computer science and all that stuff mixed together. This doesn't exist unless people like Jeremy Gorner and all these other awesome Chicago Tribune reporters use phones or go to crime scenes and find out victims and get this information. They enter it into a system that then allows this to be populated. Um, so whatever the topic or form, remember that data is not the same as merely throwing up a lot of data on a web page. Uh, data journalism is not, here's some data, hope you find something interesting. Data journalism is about helping people understand what's important about the data, why it matters, what it means for you, and what it means for us. That's the real journalism part of data journalism. For example, this. Certain people like to say that Chicago is a crime-filled terribleness of man, uh, when in actuality, the majority of Chicago is very safe. 
Uh, there's a handful of parts of Chicago that are that have higher levels of shooting, higher levels of homicide, higher levels of crime. And there's a lot of reasons behind that. Poverty, um, some of these areas like Austin is one of the biggest neighborhoods in Chicago. Also one of the highest levels of poverty, uh, one of the highest levels of unemployment. You have a lot of this stuff that kind of combines. It's like, well, yes, crime tends to occur in places of low poverty. Whereas uh, where I live in North Center, uh, where also the mayor lives, um, Crime is a lot less. You have a lot less shootings, but it's also a much more affluent part of town. So again, context. Uh, oh, these are links to some questions that you can ask. Uh, how much is a limb worth? Well, it depends on where you live, based on your workers' comp claims. Uh, so again, this is a project that ProPublica did. So you can see what the maximum is for a state based upon what it would pay, um, which emergency room will see someone the fastest, so, let's use my current location on now. Again. Down here, uh, so gives you, this gives you the average wait times. So you want to go to Preston St. Joseph Hospital. 26 minutes. <laughs> that's terrifying. <laughs> um, that is, that's, so, the third best is an hour. Um, that is the worst. Um, is my doctor taking money from drug companies? Mm. So here's one in Tennessee, Kevin T. Foley. Yeah, uh, 17 million dollars. That is a good job to get. I wonder if that impacts the way that he tells you how to do stuff. Uh, what's Chicago suburban crime like? This is another thing that I built. Uh, we were doing a big story about, we were trying to find what suburban city has the worst crime. RV, Illinois. Welcome to a very bad place. Uh, and just rampant corruption, a lot of stuff's bad. But we also had all this data, work, so we were able to kind of give context to um, how their numbers compare to other places, what it all means, uh, and how they compare to kind of like other cities. Uh, where, where will you most likely get a parking ticket in Little Rock? This is the story that I did when I was an intern back in 2008. Um, and I found like all of these people were getting these tickets on Capitol Avenue in this one little spot. Well, that turns out uh, where the federal courthouse is. And they tell jurors who are in federal court cases, we don't care where you park and you can get a parking ticket, we'll pay for it. Because they don't have a parking lot for jurors. So they just tell them, park on the street, get a parking ticket, we'll pay for it. So we're talking 50 bucks per day per juror for these parking tickets that are getting paid by the federal government. The city of Little Rock knows this. And they write a shitload of parking tickets because it's like free money from the feds. Uh, so I've, and that, there's one guy who just kind of goes up and down the street, uh, and I followed him uh, for a day, and he writes the most parking tickets because that's part of his route. And I also found a guy who did the math, and it was cheaper to get the occasional parking ticket than to park his car a block further in a parking garage based on how much the parking garage was. Again, people respond to incentives. Um, so why should I care? Uh, data can help you answer questions that regular reporting can't. Or it would take like a million years. So you automatically put yourself in a position to do stories that other journalists can't do, which is, I think, pretty cool. So sometimes data can be hard to collect. All of the above examples, you have to get that data, sometimes fight for it, sometimes file lawsuits for it. In my case, have angry conversations with the city attorney of Little Rock, Arkansas, who called me boy a lot. Uh, and I was like, I don't have a law degree but I know what the fucking law says, sir. Uh, and I'm going to write a story about how you're not following it. It's like, well, gosh, doll, darn it. Uh, anyway, oh, sometimes you can scrape the data off of really annoying websites. Uh, so this is me. I have to learn how to code. And I was going to say, kind of, sort of, not really. If you want to, you can. Uh, you don't have to. I think having a, a, what I like to call like a data frame of mind helps you be able to know what is out there that you can get sometimes in paper record format. Um, it helps you with speed. Uh, if you're doing coding, uh, it can help you do things a million times faster, literally a million times faster than it could by hand. So that can be counting information, trying to find stuff in data, um, or formatting your data. Uh, you can also get you faster access. A few lines of code can help you get almost whatever you want from a website. So it can make it much more accessible. And there's also a ton of tools. There's so many tools out there that require only a little bit of code 
tell really useful visual stories. Uh, so what is data? I talked about it a couple times um, because I think it's a good starting point to, to also explain what this is. After I've kind of given you a little bit of the sizzle, I'm going to talk to you about the pan. Um, uh, it's, it, I'm going to try to keep it out of the general realm and highly technical, uh, but if I get into that world, feel free to raise your hand and I will uh, uh, try to answer it. So one of the first things is, who here has ever seen a spreadsheet before? Spreadsheets are incredibly powerful. Uh, and if you've ever heard someone talk about a database, a database is a bunch of spreadsheets that are more or less connected to each other. It's as simple as that. Uh, and it can get much more complicated than that, but at the heart of it, data is like a big old spreadsheet. So it's like uh, if you make a basic spreadsheet of cats, you can give them a name, age, favorite band, color, uh, weight. Um, you can do a bunch of this stuff. Now you have a data set of cats. That's kind of like how anything that, uh, anything that if you walk into a public governmental office and they have forms to fill out, every point on that form, someone types in somewhere. It's saved somewhere. And if it's a public institution, that data is probably public. Or some of it is public. And so that, that's like the, uh, the amount of information that's out there that's stored out there. Um, here are other things that are data. Emails, texts. Website visits, which is great if you have city councilors who have computers that are city computers and they use them during city council meetings. You can figure out what websites they're looking at, like if they're buying shit on eBay uh, or if they're looking at naughty websites. Uh, I've had colleagues that have gotten this information and found like this one city councilor was on eBay during every meeting buying golf clubs. So, is that only if they're using? City computer. That's not. That doesn't apply to your smartphone. No. So if they are, okay. if, if if so, uh, and again, the Penn State. This was Florida. Where mm -hmm. Florida is like public records paradise. Uh, what's really great is if you log into like a Wi-Fi, yeah. and you are logged in as yourself. So it's like your Wi-Fi username and password. There is a log of everything you do. They do this for HR reasons, like in case you're sending naughty things or you're looking up naughty stuff on your computer. Uh, they have to have a lot of these safeguards. So if anyone ever says we don't keep that data, I'm like. Really, what if someone sends something incredibly uh, inappropriate to somebody else? You have no way of tracking that? Wow, that's a story. I'm going to write about that. They go, no, no, no we, we have that. And you're like, okay, that's what I want. Send that to me. And they go, well, but there might be something bad in there. <coughs> well, they shouldn't be fucking breaking the law. So anyway, I get, this is, this is like, ugh, this is my stuff. Um, letters, traffic tickets, crime, weather, pet registrations, which is like a fun one and is becoming less and less public because pet companies are like down, like buying that data and then like sending crap to people for pets. Like, buy our pet food. But it's a great fun way to find like how many people have chihuahuas in the city of Chicago. What's the average name for cats or a dog? Um, you can also look at like menus, Tinder matches of data, uh, batting averages, film reviews, all of these things have data in them. Uh, so what's a database? Like I said, it's a bunch of spreadsheets put together. Public records. I think these are among the most powerful tools that journalists have, especially in America. We are very lucky uh, that Nixon was a very bad guy, uh, and then all of these states passed all of these open records laws, as well as federal uh, open records laws. Uh, over the years, they've got some have gotten stronger, some of them have gotten worse, but and then also the uh, the implementation of these laws. Sometimes public officials don't know what the laws are, or um, uh, obfuscate or act very dumb for helpful reasons to them. Um, and I think uh, uh, they are much stronger than the ability to write a snarky tweet uh, or take great photos. All of those are great storytelling tools, so can be. Um, but public records, oh, it's like really hard to fight uh, when you have like an email of somebody being like, yeah, five grand and I will vote your way. It's like, okay, I have bribery in an email. Sometimes they're that fucking stupid, uh, which is great when well, they are. Uh, you know, like the Chicago Tribune, uh, still doing great work about these red light cameras because a bunch of people got in jail because they were bribing city officials and sometimes openly talking about it, like in public channels, because they're dumb. Like they're not even good at corruption. Like I sometimes that's like the it's like be better at being bad. So, oh, uh, I tell a story about old advisor. Uh, my old advisor in college, he used to work for a newspaper down in Florida. And one day, an old buddy of his, who's kind of a rabble rouser, this is like the late 70s, came to town and he had to fill a whole page 
every day of his newspaper. He's like the only reporter for that whole page. And one day this reporter comes and he's just like, hey, uh, have you ever asked them for public records relating to uh, uh, like their, when they ask for like uh, meal reimbursements? And my advisor was like, no, I never have. So they're like, well, let's go down and get them. So they go down to City Hall, ask for them. City Hall's like, why, why do you want to see those? And he's like, because they're public record. And they're like, yeah, but, uh, uh, they're like, I don't give a shit yet, but uh, uh, give, me, give us the public records. They give it to them, and they go through it, and it seems as if all of the city council members, it's like Wednesday was like the, the day the city council would meet at like 7 or 8 o'clock. Wednesday at lunch, they all seem to be at the same restaurant at about the same time, and are always submitting reimbursements for meals at this restaurant. So like the next week, he shows up at this restaurant at like noon, and just listens to hear all of them discuss city stuff. And then when they get to the city council thing, for some reason they always voting 7-0, 7-0, uh, Rarely does anyone object to stuff because they were deciding it beforehand. And then he's like, hi fellas, what's up? Uh, this is illegal. Uh, probably not a squeaky of voice. And uh, again, you use this data, go and you can, uh, data, you can use this sort of public records to find out that stuff. But that's like one of my favorite things because it's like, that is so not what the rules say you're supposed to do. Why do we have rules if we don't follow them? Um, here are some other awesome data that you can get. Payroll records. City, uh, that was for payroll records. Uh, city, county, and state level. Oh, this is where you find people with their hand in the public till. Uh, double dipping uh, is a huge thing. Um, there was a story, this is like probably about a decade ago, and this one guy who was like a city attorney for like five cities in New Jersey, 40 hours a week in each city, making like a hundred figure each city. No, he was not. You know, like that happens a lot. And if you get like state and, uh, and what you can do is you can match and find people with the same name, the same date of birth, there's a chance they're the same person. Um, and some states allow you to even get further information. Like Florida, if you were a journalist, you could request the social security number of somebody for a reason like that. Check the two records were the same, they would give you that. Plus, there's other ways to get people's social security numbers. Um, it's very easy. Um, inspection records, health uh, data, uh, health, like food uh, is a big one. Um, I always hold like college newspapers to get the health records for all the food places near campus. Uh, because they might not be as good as you think they are. Uh, bridge inspection data. Bridges in America are really old, and they're crumbling, and they fail these records a lot, and you don't do anything about it. And odds are, if you have any major metropolitan area, you can find a bunch of what are called efficient bridges that are basically like, they're bad. No one should drive on them. Good luck. Uh, voter registries. It's a great way to find out if uh, your elected officials voted in elections. So if someone's running for public office, a lot of states will say whether or not you voted, not who you voted for, but just the fact that you voted in primaries and other things. So if you have somebody who's like, public service is the best, and you should vote for me because yada, 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 and you're like, well, you have not voted in the last 20 years. Why should someone vote for you if you are maybe not a citizen of mine? It's a way to be able to ask that question. And that, I've seen uh, 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 people running for office melt down when you ask that question. They freak out. And it's just like, wow, you didn't think anyone would find out. Um, and then sometimes they get in office and they try to make that illegal for you to access. Uh, accidents or calls for service. This can show you how fast people respond to like 911 calls. And then if you map it over a geographic area, are there racial implications? Do they go faster to white rich neighborhoods? Are they slower to poor minority neighborhoods? The Milwaukee Journal Sentinel did this a couple of years. They looked at how fast potholes were fixed. Guess where they got fixed faster? Neighborhoods where rich white people lived. Despite having the same amount of time where someone called and said there's a pothole and you could fix it. The city was like, it's not racism. It's like, well, then what is it? Um, so much more. There's tons and tons and tons of data. Uh, oh, I guess I did this. Uh, with payroll data, you can find the highest paid person, which is always a fun story, because especially if it's, if it's the city and it's not the mayor, I always think that's fun. It's like, sometimes people make twice what the mayor makes, and so you're like, and sometimes the mayor gets mad, and it's like, you should pay me more. Um, the amount of overtime pay per person, this is a big city, especially with, like, you know, firefighters, cops, 
um, kind of like public safety officials. A lot of times, like overtime pay, it's just kind of built into your, like they expect you're gonna get 10, 20 hours a week. Well, it starts to get to a point where if you work like more than 55 or 60 hours a week, I forget the exact uh, time, your rate of accident increases, your rate of like on the job, bad stuff, just goes really high. Also, if you're paying somebody time and a half, I think it's, uh, was it 20? If, 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 yeah, if you pay them a certain amount, you can basically hire another person instead of paying that person over time. And you'll get another person who works 40 hours a week and would not be fatigued. Like a nurse who works 90 hours a week is more accident prone than a nurse who works 40. Same thing for police officers, more likely to make mistakes or not have as better of judgment. Uh, and what I found, I did this project where I found, uh, I never was able to write the story about it, but I found a lot of these older police officers in this one city, uh, they all, have, they all, like all of the cops that got the most overtime were working at the airport. All of those cops were near the age of getting their pension. And the way that most pensions are calculated is the final three years that you're in service. So what it looked like was all the retiring cops got to go work at the airport make a shitload of money, not have to work very hard, and retire with really high pensions. Like, nice work if you can get it. Uh, again, I'm not making a moral judgment, but I'm like, if we have rules against this, why are you allowing it? You can also look at male versus female pay. Uh, you can compare uh, the payroll data with the actual city budget. So how much are they paying? How much were they supposed to be paying? Uh, and in the city of Chicago, it rarely is the same. Yes? Small question. Yeah, you have to have that or else. So how do you get that? Uh, if somewhere in their digital operations, they store who is a who identifies as male or female, and you should if you can get that, you should ask for it. Sometimes state laws have stuff against it, uh, but if you can get it, try to get it. Uh, yeah, how many make more than a mayor? Yeah, sometimes they have that as well. Not always. Um, or sometimes they're going to make it harder for you to get. Um, and sometimes it's because they have really old systems that makes it difficult, to which I respond, it's been 20 years and you haven't updated your payroll information systems. You probably have a really expensive contract because of that. When I was, uh, I worked at the Boston Globe and I went to this event and I was talking to some city officials. This is years ago. Uh, but they had said their tax, like their property tax database was like this really old school mainframe. Like we're talking 1960s, 1970s technology. So the entire city's tax base was on this system that only two people in the city government knew how to run. And if it stopped working, they didn't know what they were gonna do. And like that's what sends out your bill for your taxes. And so these can become big problems. Like, you know, if the city of Chicago's tax bill system doesn't work, how does it ask for money? So. Too. Yeah. Oh, I worked yeah. at a uh, certain company where there's one that now is, is in four cities, and there's one guy in New York who's the only one who knows how to do it, and he's intentionally done that. Oh yeah. And then he gets mad when you call him on Sunday, which I say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the only one who built this this way so that they can't fire. Yes. Yeah, sometimes uh, we web developers and we technology people will build things for job security purposes. Uh, I try not to do that. I'd rather you be able to solve your problem and you think I'm so great when you hire me. But uh, that's me. Uh, another old uh, old story is take one database and then match it with another database that has a similar field. So public employees who are felons, again, not saying there's anything necessarily morally wrong about being a felon or uh, public uh, employees being able uh, to can be felons. But if your state or city has rules against it, why is it being allowed? Are they not doing background checks? Um, also, are they in positions, like if somebody's been arrested for grand larceny 30 times, and they're like the city bursar, like, uh, maybe not, not, they shouldn't have that job. Uh, public employees owing child support. Again, not a moral judgment thing, but they did this in, I think, Missouri, and they found like this very hard-nosed, by the books judge who owed a ton in child support when he was very mean and very strict, yet he owed a ton of money to like a, a spouse. Uh, felons who are hunters. Uh, I've done this uh, project. Again, it's finding people who have uh, lost their right to own a firearm and then have a hunting license. Uh, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have a firearm or that they've used it, but in the case of the project I did, I then took it a step further and I found felons 
who had a hunting license, who then said they shot a deer with a gun. Not allowed. Uh, and I called some of them, and they were just like, oh, no, no, no. I'm allowed to have a gun and I'm shooting deer. Uh, and some of them actually had their rights restored by the government. So some of them were allowed to actually hunt. Uh, but again, it's just like, why do we have laws if we don't follow them? Uh, political donation data plus public employee data. So you can find out who are people donating to. This was the 2008 election. Uh, and I found at uh, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, where I was attending school, uh, this was the total number of times donations were made to specific presidential candidates. I don't know who Thomas Tancredo is. Uh, wow, this is a little... Um, but you can see, like, John Edwards got 23 grand. Remember that guy? Uh, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton. You can see where money was going to at from public employees. Uh, so I said, getting in a data frame of mind, everything is data. You can break everything down into data. All of us in this room, we each have a name, we have a height, we have a kind of shirt we're wearing. All of that's like a data that you can, like, plot in some sort of spreadsheet. Uh, I always like to say, if you look at a parking ticket, uh, think of all of the data that's on here. You have uh, the name of the violation, you have how much it costs, you have where this ticket was happening, you have why they call it a pickup versus a truck. Like that, a human had to make that choice. Same thing, a human had to decide um, a, a lot of these things, like how much is the ticket worth. Uh, and because of that, humans are making decisions about the data, which means the data have the exact same biases that humans normally have, which means the data can be flawed. So never think of data as sacrosanct and perfect, because humans made it, and humans designed it, which means humans will fuck it up. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so, and also, any form that can be filled out, it's being put in a database somewhere. And also, again, even forms like this, uh, there might be things on here um, that uh, are, are biased against uh, people. Like, like, I mean, even uh, my mom, I remember my mom telling me she was like an insurance salesperson in Iowa. When Iowa changed and allowed same-sex marriage, all the insurers had to change their forms instead of being husband-wife, it's just spouse-spouse. So there's even like little stuff like that uh, that have some biases that can be in there. Or, uh, uh, you know, um, yeah, that sort of stuff can, because someone had to make a choice, and that choice is implications. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like on this one, yeah. So, like this, uh, someone's decided to include meter violation as well as the code number on here. Why? Why did they do that? Probably for readability purposes. Uh, same reason again. They decided your car is a pickup instead of a truck. And in some parts of the country, like a truck is different. Like. They have different terms for truck and semi and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then, so again, data is political. And by political, I don't mean liberal or conservative. I just mean a group of people came together and made a decision. Um, so yeah, humans came up with it. Uh, data can also be manipulated and they buy with it. So these two graphs, this is really old. This is, I think, from this old book, How to Lie with Statistics. This is the exact same data. The only difference is this one uh, over here, that's like 18 million, and it looks like, oh my god, government payroll is crazy. Whereas this one, zero is down here, and it looks like, well, the data really changed. This is a thing that happens all the time. They take that data and manipulate it to try to make whatever their political point is. And so in this case, it's somebody going, oh my god, government payroll is crazy, it's skyrocketing, we gotta do something about it now. Whereas this one, it's more like, yeah, it went up. But in the grand scheme of things, it didn't go up a huge amount, which is why context is important. Um, and there are good and bad ways of displaying data. And there are whole like semester-long classes about this. Uh, getting public records. Uh, this is where you kind of learn uh, uh, how to be less of a question. Uh, it's all, it's, a lot of it's about your attitude. I was always assume it's public and free. When you're asking for something, assume it's public. Ask how they're going to give it to you. Assume that it's not going to cost you anything. So don't go in apologetic and be like, I'm so sorry that I'm asking you for this public record. Um, I don't know how much it's going to cost, uh, but um, yeah, like, uh, like, how, like if you could just like, uh, I'd, uh, I'd be so appreciative if you could give it to me. That is a way that you can go about it. But instead you should just be like, yeah, I'm trying to get uh, the latest public finance records for this last uh, election campaign. 
Do I talk to you, or is there somebody else that I can get it? And if you can email them, great. And then if they tell you to go jump the tree, that's where you can take it a step further. Uh, it's the public's information, and you are a member of the public. It's not because you're a journalist that you get this stuff. It is because you are a member of the public. Everyone has the same rights to this stuff. Some states have laws that say you have to be a citizen of that state or a resident in order to get that stuff. Uh, and in that case, ask a friend who lives there to file your records request. Um, be nice but firm. You don't have to be a jerk. But you, uh, I think by being firm, it is, it's more just like they go like, oh yeah, we, we don't give that out. Oh, huh, well it's actually a public record. So why don't you give it out? It's like, oh, it's just, in, you know, we just don't want that data out there. Like, okay, yeah, but it is a public record. So do you have a written rule that says you're allowed to break the law? Or how does that work? Because uh, I'd love to see that, that written thing that you have, that official public document, telling employees to break the law. Because that's actually illegal. Man, this is a really cool story. Who's your boss? How much do you make a year to break the law? How much does your boss make to break the law and to decide to break the law? Oh, you're going to give me the data? Cool. Thanks. Like, the call doesn't have to go like that, but a lot of times if people are being stubborn and shitty, when it's their job to help you get public data, be like, okay, um, how much do you make a year? Because you are actively against what's in the public's interest, which is giving out this information. And if you are a bad public servant, that is a story. If their systems are so bad, they can't give you the data, that's a public story. Why just pay $10 million for this shitty system? Like if your accounting software can't give this information out, how do your people make reports? How does your, you know, your head uh, budgetary officer figure out how much the city is paying people? Like, holy shit, how are you doing your job? Uh, that seems like a story. Scandal. And then they go, okay, what do you want? How do you want it? Um, forget you're a Midwesterner. <laughs> like, I have to forget this all the time. Like, you can, you can, again, I always have to make a phone call first before I file what's called a, like, an actual public records request. Because first, I'm like, hi, I'm trying to get this. I don't know if you keep it online somewhere where I can just download it, or if, uh, when I request it, if there's a simple way for me to ask for it, that I can get it real quick. Because sometimes you're like, listen, if you can get all of this, but if you ask for for not just this one little part that really you don't need, you can get to you really quick. If you need that one little part that won't help you tell your story that you're actually trying to tell, it's going to take weeks. And so that's why I like to call first. And a lot of times, they want to do their job, they want to give you this, but they need official record request from you to be like, oh, sorry boss, Andy's being a jerk again, got to give him the public documents, when they wish they could just give it right to you but they need to show reasons why they did stuff as if we're up your Yeah, first call, talk to a human. I always say, talk to the nerds. So if it's about like actual data, ask to talk to their technicians. Like get one of them on the phone. So a lot of times, they're really helpful. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, we keep all of the overtime records. I just email it to you. And they never want you to get on the phone with those people because they are like that. And they can tell you that what the public information officer has been spreading is complete bullshit. Um, find out about the data. So find out information about what they keep. So if they do keep uh, a budgetary like payroll data, does it also include their gender? Does it include their age? Does it include how long they've worked for the company, or excuse me, for the, uh, for the city? Have they had previous jobs? What's their job title? Are they getting paid more than they technically should? All that sort of stuff. Uh, file a records request asking for e an electronic version. Because sometimes they'll just print off a spreadsheet and go, here you go. And you're like, you sir are a jerk and you know this was stupid. Send me the email uh, that you printed of this. Sometimes state law doesn't allow you to do that. But if you ask nicely, hopefully they will. Uh, the government usually has to prove it's not public. So if someone says, no, you can't have this, that's not a response. The response is according to uh, uh, Illinois state law, this subsection, this, this is not a public record. And most public records laws say they have to cite the law. Uh, and what I always have to say is when you're filing these, um, you're writing this for a potential judge to look at, uh, or a potential attorney's general uh, to look at, and be like, yeah, that's a public record, give them this shit. Um, asking schedule. Have a regular schedule of stuff you ask for. Like, it's the first of the month. 
time to ask for the logs of city inspections of restaurants. Or it's the, you know, the, this quarter just ended, time to ask for all of last year's, or the fiscal year ends, ask for all of last year's salaries and road construction projects and all this sort of stuff. Uh, you keep a spreadsheet of all the stuff you're asking for. Uh, again, be persistent but patient. But what's nice is, if you're always asking for stuff, like every couple days you're asking for public records, they just start coming in every once in a while. And when they come in, oh, time to do a story on this. And then you already asked for a bunch more, comes in, oh, time to do a story on it. So it helps you always kind of have stuff flowing in to be able to work on. Uh, again, make them cite the law. Always ask for electronic versions. Um, there's some standard excuses. It's too hard. It's really hard to do. I go, oh, hmm, where does the state law say that that is an excuse? Because sometimes it does, but usually it doesn't. Uh, the main person is out of town. Can't do it. Oh. Well, what if the mayor asked for this information? How would you get it? Oh, there's someone else who can do it? Cool, have them do it. Uh, their system can't export the data. Cool, I'd love to get the contract that you paid for this data and why you can't do simple shit. Because that is an interesting story. Oh, was it you that decided to purchase this $6 million system? Wow, how much do you make a year? Because you suck at your job. Um, it's not public, prove it. Prove that it's not public. Tell us it's not. The records have confidential information. According to who? State law? If state law, understandable. Then remove that part and give me the rest. Um, they will also sometimes say it has proprietary information in it. And like, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a state document or a city document. What's proprietary about something that the public paid for? It? Like, you shouldn't have paid for that contract that does this. Um, if we give it to you, we've got to give it to everyone. <laughs> so, tough shit. Like, that's how public records laws work. You're just looking for dirt on us. Not necessarily. I have done stories where I've asked for public records on, like, building projects, and you know what's an awesome story you get it right? The city built something under budget. <laughs> they heard I'm talking about it. Uh, I bet someone opened up the door. Did somebody open up the door? Yeah. Uh, so you're just looking for dirt on us. It's like, not always. I love writing stories about government did good. Because you don't get around that all. Or this place did their project under budget and they saved 200 grand because of it. They didn't pay for lunches for schools or something like that. Uh, but again, it's just like, even if we are, so what? That's not an exemption in the public records law. You also never have to tell them what you're writing about or why you want to public records. I get, um, I like to blame this yeah, when I get that, I just go. It really is open work. Oh, which I totally understand, especially when you're you have like a uh, when you're working with a lot. But what I sometimes like to say, if, if it's a jerky person, I just go like, tough shit. The law says you have five days to respond. You can also talk to state legislators and get the law changed. But for now, the law says five days, bucko, uh, email me. We don't keep it electronically. It's 2017. How? How do you not keep it electronically? So much of this stuff has been digitized. Uh, so much stuff has gone digital since like the early 2000s. Um, so again, how much do you make a year? Why are you so bad at your job? Uh, why don't you have electronic files? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That will cost you $12 million. I got a figure, I think it was like 100 grand to, to search through some emails. Uh, and I was just like, so it, it costs $100,000? Like, yeah, 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 it's 100 grand. It was always 100 grand? And I'm like, weird, that's always the exact same amount of money. Are you trying to hire a person whose job it is to search through emails because you don't have one that exists? Uh, but basically, they're like, no, 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 I gotta go to that person's computer and sit down and type and search through email. I'm like, that violates every HR rule that you could possibly have. It's supposed to be stored in an outside location for harassment and other purposes. And uh, they're like, oh, you mean that system? Oh, that's like 50 bucks if you want to search that. Like, what the hell? <laughs> um, I'm going to call your boss. I've gotten that before. I'm like, okay, have fun. Uh, you have five days to respond to this public records request. Like, try to get me fired. Uh, it's like, I'm definitely going to ask for your fucking salary. Um, learn their data retention policies. So find out how long you're supposed to keep some of this data. 
when bored, file a request. Uh, file one to two a week. Uh, ABR, always be requesting. Um, a fun fact, public universities have a lot of great data that you can request. Uh, public universities cost oh, so much data. Purchasing cards, oh, state, city, county, also have purchased P cards. Everything they paid for. I found that my university was like, they're all getting, uh, everyone was like, bought, like uh, giving their cars wash at this one car wash. Uh, that was not the official like place they had like a deal to get like their cars washed. And like turned out, shocker, somebody was related to somebody who owned the car wash. Um, gas cards, uh, how much are they filling up their gas? Uh, and also, if, like, if they're filling up a ton, are they filling up their own vehicles? Or are they filling up the company, or excuse me, like work vehicles? Uh, emails, ah, get emails, ask for emails. Uh, what do they talk about? Whenever you have like, a new business that's like thinking about relocating, file a records request for all discussions about that business. Sometimes you'll have people who are like, oh, that guy's a jerk. But that person at, at Midco or Bubba Co is the dumbest. Okay, cool. Well, now you can write a story about how they're talking smack about this business that publicly they're wooing. Privately they're like, they're the worst. Uh, it's also good if anyone is up for a, uh, uh, if anyone's like, applying for like, a superintendent job or something like that, file a records request for the place they used to work. And use like certain like lewd and lascivious search terms. I think it was the Omaha World Herald, I think, did that for like some new superintendent. They filed a records request in this, this person's old, this old district and found out this person was sexually harassing people. But no one knew, because no one had done a search like that. And so they're like, well, we've got all these emails, so sometimes you can get, yes? We got text messages. Depends. So uh, some places, SMS, you can get, again, depending on the phone. Sometimes they used to have like these pager systems where they could send text messages. What was his name? Kwame Kilpatrick in Detroit. Yeah, he got out of big trouble uh, because they caught his flandering through SMS. But I believe one of the either the Detroit News or the Free Press, whichever the newspaper was, I don't think they got through an official public records request of every search. I think a source got it to them because it was really hard to get. Well, like if it's a town issue phone. Yeah. You would say, you know, want to see text messages that this employee. It, again, again, it depends on their retention policies and also state law. And if you can't get them, the state law says it's supposed to be public. Ask why they're not doing it in such a way to preserve those records. Yeah, um, so it's kind of official that like, you like a private email address. Like, yeah, you know. yeah, like that's against the law. Yeah, it's, I think it's supposed to. They're yeah, supposed to be saved in, in the municipal system, whether you use it's private, you know, email or not. Yeah. I would file a records request for access to that private email because if he is doing, he or she is doing public business in that email, it's therefore public, even if it's a private email account. Um, I think I think Chicago, I think the, the, the dear old Rob Emanuel, uh, my, my neighbor down the street, uh, I believe he might have been using a, or had been receiving separate private email. I think they ruled that those were therefore public because it was public business. Uh, so depending on your jurisdiction, you might be able to do the same thing. Um, uh, a story I like to tell is, uh, if I can, I was trying to make sure I remember it correctly. Uh, at the Chicago Tribune, we were building this tool to show you everyone you could possibly vote for Cook County and some of the outlying counties. It had no ads on it. It was just kind of like a nifty tool. Like every position, like the Water Reclamation District, all these judicial sub-district judges you could vote for, things I didn't know existed. And we wanted to get a thing that allows you to put in your address so it would pop up. So we had to get these what were called shape files from the county. Well, the county likes to sell that for a ton of money because they sell it to you know, uh, contractors and other places that use it for more commercial purposes. And in their like download website page, they have a thing where you would sign, where you'd say, I won't release this public data, I gotta pay 500 bucks or something like that. And we're like, well, if we download it, we can't use it because you say you know, it can't be used or put out publicly. And I don't wanna sign a legal document doing that. So I, Call and I was like, how do we get this? And they're like, you can't, you gotta fill out the thing. And I was like, okay, well, I filed a records request and I stated, here's our purpose, it is not public, therefore you should give, or excuse me, it's not a for, for profit, you should give it to us, it's for public good, blah, 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 side of the law, side of the law, blah, 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 give it to me. The head of the GIS office accidentally replied all, uh, and I don't remember if she called me an asshole, 
Uh, like in my mind she did, but she might have just called me like this jerk. Like don't give this jerk what he wants. It was something like that. And I was just like, I'm getting this data. Because <laughs> like, then I responded and I was like, hi Mary, asshole here. Uh, uh, can you tell me why uh, you're, you're you know, violating, like not wanting to give out the, the law or whatever, or wanting to give out the data. Next email was the data. And then like a ton of extra stuff too. And, and I was like, cool, I don't have to pursue like me being aggressive towards you uh, because of this. That me, it was like a fun story to tell all the other journalists. But we got what we needed for it, so I didn't have to take it any further. But then as soon as we um, got it, oh God, is that ring? Um, we put it online, I think it was just a uh, We put all that online so we didn't have it. And it still exists at the Chicago Tribune's. Yeah, accessibility of, um, like, what I'm interested in is like a not-for-profit hospital. What, what kind of accessibility do you get? IRS 990s. That's about, it? That's about it. Um, some states sometimes have different rules around how public some of those places are, especially if they get public dollars. I found a website where you can get like financial, if the hospital has taken part of money and there's a public bond, yes. you know, they post their financials yes. there. That was yeah. Cool. So you get that. Uh, some states have, uh, sometimes they'll side on the side of making that stuff more public. Like, a, like more internal stuff public. If it's related, like alumni associations are like quasi-public entities, because they're promoting usually like a public university. And sometimes they get housing on campus, and they're good friends with the, everybody in the university, but they're not part of the university arm, but they help pay for coaches, cars, and they do all this other booster shit, but they're not public entities. It's kind of like a way to kind of sometimes circumnavigate the law. Um, and sometimes you can argue this shouldn't be public because of it. And sometimes um, what I did, I, I was a rabbit rouser in college, I don't know if you're picking up on it. I emailed every single member of our alumni association, uh, like every chapter in the entire United States. I sent out like an email like 500 people trying to get some dirt. Uh, and I was just like, hi everyone, uh, here I am, uh, send me an email uh, if you have this information. And I got it. So it was like private information they didn't, they didn't want to release. And then the head of the alumni association was like, I hear you are trying to talk to us. Would you like to come over to my office? Uh, he later was the interim head of the journalism school. So that was fun. <laughs> he remembered me. <laughs> he was like, very nifty trick, emailing 500 people. Uh, oh, and this, this is just a bunch of other um, projects that I did uh, that you can tell with data. I think the, one of the most interesting ones out of this is would you make a parole or murder? This was a project we did at the Boston Globe. And it was, we give you some basic stuff from a real crime, and then we ask, would you grant parole or not? And then we tell you what actually happened. And almost all of these crimes are relatively similar. And then yes, grant parole. And then they re 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 uh, release this person, and he had no known violations. So they let you know, well, did they commit a crime and go back to jail after? So again, taking data, coming up with a way to tell a story through it, putting it on. So yeah, I think that is all of my that's my spiel. Uh, I think all I have left is my my little question slide and my contact information. But, uh, yeah, this is me fighting the government with filing public information requests. Have you found have some officials really helpful in, in the recurring ones? They just yep. on the first they just automatically send it to you. Yep. You can't build that into a request, though. You have to. No. Every request has to be for you. That's called a standing request. Right. And sometimes, if you have, you know, like you develop a rapport with your sources and build. Yeah, or sometimes what happens because you do it so often, they build something on their website and post it. Like, that's what they'll do. It's like, fuck, this is a lot of work. I'm just, you know, Ted asks for it every Monday, which got posted Sunday night. Um, another great tactic is. Filing a public records request about all public records requests they've received. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Isn't that uh, why that people try to steal other people's scoops? Yeah, but then there's part of it. No, 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 I know. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, so like, the, it tells you what the city of Chicago you did that because they're like, we're going to make everything open, you bastards. We're going to list every public records request it's going to happen. And like the newspapers, like the Tribune, got mad. They're like, the Sun Times has got to scope us. And now I'm just kind of like, who cares? I think what matters is the story they have more than anything. Um, another big one is filing a public records request about your public records request. All communication about this. So that's where you find out people being like, it's this asshole Andy again. 
when I was in college, uh, as you can see, like uh, now that I'm older and uh, less rambunctious, um, we that we, we had filed a records request. Um, we had two wrestlers who got kicked off the wrestling team for in their off time, and they're like you know they're, they had a summer job was appearing in um, solo uh, pornography. Uh, part of the problem was one of them had a big old Nebraska tattoo on his thigh, which was visible during his performance. Um, and it got like leaked on some website that like only existed to tell this story. It was a blog that was put up basically to shame these guys. And the school was like, oh, we think they violated the NCAA rules. Not really. It was kind of like a free speech thing. But our, the head of uh, the athletics at the time was kind of a uh, pre-religious guy, very conservative, and we were like, is it because they think these two men are, are, are gay? Because this was posted, it was gay porn by the site. And, uh, and I think both the guys were like, no, no, they're just paying us much money. Um, and so what we filed a records request was for a bunch of homophobic slurs through the athletic department's email system. Like, has anyone used any of these words? Or said the names of these guys. Uh, because we wanted to know if it was like, get these homophobic slur out of here. And the university freaked out, and they were like, if you want that data, it's going to cost so much money. And I was like, okay, well, before that, I'll file a records request about the data. And this was like during a meeting with like, the head public information officer for the entire university. He said, I call a newspaper. And she was just like, you're going to do what? I was like, well, I'll file a records request about the records request. And she was just like, we don't ever have to talk to you ever again. She got real mad real quick. And I was just like, okay, well, is that going to be like a formal document? Because I would like a copy of it. Uh, and also any communication you're going to have about it. And I'll file a records request about that. And I was just like, oh, this this person looks like they're going to hit me. Uh, and, like, and my mom was like, deservedly so. Um, but I'm sorry, the law says you're supposed to give this to us. And we ended up like, they ended up doing a lesser search and they didn't find anything. But there was like no way to know. Um, and then they, they didn't talk to us for like a month. Like they wouldn't allow any public university officials to talk to my college newspaper because they were mad about us for being bad journalists for trying to get information. <laughs> and then they were like, what if you promised to only file like one or two public records requests a semester? Um, and I was just like, nowhere in the state law does it say that. Because they're just like, we don't want to have to comply with the law. And uh, it became a big kerfuffle, and it was a fun time. So, and that was 10 years ago. Uh, have things changed? It's just federal now. Uh, yeah. If you just send an email just saying, hey, Mary, can you just send me this document and throw me toward it? Does that constitute the public information? It depends on the person. And that, it, again, it kind of depends on the person. If you have a good relationship with them, sometimes that's enough. Like, if, if, it's, if it's like a person, like, like when you said, File a public information request for public information requests. Would that email then fall under a public information Could. request? Could. Uh, sometimes states have specific laws saying what constitutes public records request. Like a lot of times, I like to say, pursuant to state law such and such, the Public Records Act, I'm hereby requesting. It's very lawyerly, uh, and I think it's the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press has like a form where you can almost every state fill out the language uh, to help you with that. Try to make your request the least broad. So include like a time period. So like I want from January 1, 2016, to December 31st, 2016. I want all this. And uh, especially like, in, like a, if you were asking about the city of Chicago, each department gets records from requests. So it would be easier if you asked like the fire department for theirs, or uh, uh, sanitation, streets and sanitation, like that's where you find shit. Um, every place I've worked, it's like public works. Uh, that is where you find stuff. Um, I did a, uh, when I was in, I entered in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I filed a records request for just like salaries. And uh, the way the city attorney read the state law was he would have to contact every single person and give them the right to contact the attorney general to let them know that this public records request may or may not be legal. He's like, I just got to let them know. And so he, and I was like, excuse me? You're gonna do what? He's like, yeah, we have to email and write letters to like 12,000 people, letting them know that you're gonna ask for this. And give your name, your phone number, your email address, uh, and let them know that you're asking for their salaries. And I'm like, okay, sure. 
next thing I know, I'm getting like all of these like very threatening phone calls at like two in the morning that are just like, you want my fucking salary? You know? But then I also got, oh, you got to check out Jimmy in accounting. Like, it was like the best hotline tip ever. Because like I got like 50 phone calls from people who were just like, oh, you want to know who's like getting like too much money? This person and this person. And so it was just like, it backfired. Uh, but they, there was like 12 people that said, like that told the attorney general, it's like, no, not okay. The attorney general was like, yes, your salary's public. You are a city employee. Um, but yeah, that was fun. That was, that was a fun journey. That was a, okay, we're doing this city hall report. He's like, what the hell did you do? Uh, they were pissed. So, but I was like, you just blame the intern. So, yeah, I think that's my time. But uh, thank you so much for yeah, sitting around. And feel free to email me or ask questions. And yeah, I'll be around for a little while longer.